In this lesson, I'm going to cover a couple of methods for solving quadratic equations. To start with, I graph the quadratic equation x squared minus x minus 6. Here's its graph. It's a quadratic because the highest powered x term is a 2. And what I'd like to do is use this graph to solve the equation where is x squared minus x minus 6, this thing, equal to 0. This is asking where is the y value 0. So like where does y equal 0? Well, if you look at the graph, y equals 0 means you're on the x-axis. So I see there's two spots. There's a spot here and a spot here. So it looks like we have one, two solutions that make this equation true. And this appears to be x is equal to negative 2. And this is x is equal to, it looks like positive 3. Do these two numbers make this equation true? Well, let's check it out. I'm going to plug them in and see what happens. Starting with this one, x is equal to negative 2. I would have negative 2 squared minus negative 2 minus 6. And on the other side, that should be equal to 0. Like, does this actually happen? Negative 2 squared is 4. Minus a minus 2 is actually a plus 2. And I think this is going to work out, right? I mean, 4 plus 2 is 6. 6 minus 6 is equal to 0, so that definitely checks out. This is for sure a solution. Does the same thing happen for x is equal to 3? Let's see. 3 squared minus 3 minus 6. Does that equal 0 as well? Okay, uh, 3 squared is 9. Minus 3 minus 6. I can see that this one's going to work. Um, this is 9 minus 9, and certainly 9 minus 9 is equal to 0. So here's a method that you can actually use to solve a quadratic equation. You could look at its graph, see if you can identify the places where it equals 0, and if you plug them into the original equation, you could check your answers just to make sure that it's true. So when it comes to solving a quadratic equation, you could really think of it as finding the x-intercepts of this equation here. Uh, you don't always have to rely on a graph. Like I said, there's other methods, so let's check out one of those. This was the equation on the previous slide, and we already know that the answers are negative 2 and positive 3. One method that you can use is factoring. If one side of your equation is 0, and you can factor the other side of the equation, each place where the factors is 0 will be solutions. I like to use a guess and check approach to figuring out how I could factor x squared minus x minus 6. It seems like we should be able to take something to a power of 2, and break it down into a product of things to the first power. Well, for starters, if you want to get an x squared, you'd have to have an x and an x. So I'm going to place those in here like this. And then you're going to put a number here and a number here so that if you multiply these things together, it gives you a negative x and a negative 6. The first place that I focus is this number at the end, this negative 6. If you want a negative number, I know you'd have to have a positive and a negative. So I'm going to go ahead and put, well, one of the numbers it has to be plus, the other has to be minus. Okay. So now we can think of all numbers, all integers, that multiply to 6. Let's see, um, not a lot of options. We could just jot those off to the side. Well, you could have, you know, 1, 6, make one positive, make one negative. You could have 2 and 3. Well, that's pretty much it. But we want to choose the ones that when we combine them by adding them, you get a 1 in front of the x. So I think the way that this will work is if I put a 2 here and a 3 here. 2 times 3 is 6. The positive and the negative makes it negative. And when I add positive 2 and negative 3, it definitely gives me a negative 1 in front of the x. So this is equivalent to this. But if you want to solve this equation, you can take each individual factor and set them equal to 0. To solve x plus 2 equals 0, you would subtract 2 from both sides of your equation. And we get one of our solutions. We get that x is equal to negative 2. Uh, likewise, if you want to solve x minus 3 equals 0, you would add 3 to both sides. And that gives you the other solution as well, that x is equal to positive 3. This matches up with our solutions on the previous slide. So here, here's another method. We didn't graph it, but we factored it. 
and check to see where each factor was equal to zero. In this first example, I really just want to practice this factoring method where we'll have quadratics, we'll factor it, and use those factors to figure out the solutions. Let's start with this one here. Um, x squared plus 24 is equal to 10x. Well, for starters, one side has to be equal to zero. So what I'm going to do is subtract 10x from both sides of my equation. Now, when I do this, I'm going to write the left side as x squared. I'll then put the minus 10x next and then the plus 24. And on the other side of my equation, I have 0, which is exactly what I want. It's at this stage where we can say, OK, I think I can break this up into two linear factors. And we can take a guess and check approach to think about the numbers that work. So you have to have an x and an x. I see that the last number is, well, it's positive, and it's a positive 24. But also, the number in front of the x's is negative. This is enough to indicate that both of these have to be a minus. And the reason is, a negative times a negative is a positive. But when you add these two negative numbers together, it remains negative. I'm now thinking about 24. What are two numbers that multiply to 24, but at the same time are going to add to this negative 10? Well, 24 has a lot of factors. If I think about it a little bit, I think it's going to be 4 and 6. Of course, we'll make them both negative, but the product is 24, and I'll put those numbers here. If I add negative 4 and negative 6 together, that gives me negative 10. The next step is to set each factor equal to 0, and then solve for x. I will add 4 to both sides. On this one, I'll add 6 to both sides. And I have my two solutions. x is equal to 4, and also x is equal to 6. All right, let's try this one x squared plus 9x plus 14. Well, it's already set equal to 0, so that's good. Um, let's see. If I want to break this into two factors, again, you have to have an x and an x, because when I multiply those, it'll give me x squared. Everything in here is positive. It's a positive 14, so I know I'll just put pluses for both. And now I'm thinking about the 14. I want to choose the factors of 14 that will add to a positive 9. Let's see, 14 has 1 and 14, but it also has 2 and 7. Those multiply to 14, yet also add to 9. So I'll put the 2 here and the 7 here. I'll now set each factor equal to 0. On the first equation, I'll subtract 2 from both sides. On the second one, I'll subtract 7 from both sides. And this gives me two solutions. x is equal to negative 2, and also x is equal to negative 7. Let's try one more by factoring. So uh, this one here. I'm noticing that there's no number at the end, like you could think of a plus 0 at the end. But when it comes to factoring something like this, where you only have two terms, a good approach is to take out the greatest common factor from the two terms. So I really think of this one as, OK, I'll set up one set of parentheses. You know, it's good that this side's already 0. But I want to factor out one thing. And I want to take the most out of both terms as possible. I'll go through systematically and say, well, if I focus on the numbers first, just ignore the x's for the time being, I see a 4 and a 2. The most that you can take out from both terms is a 2. So in terms of the numbers you're taking out, 2 is the most. Now, I'll focus on the variables. I have an x squared and an x. Well, I can't take an x squared from both because I don't have enough x's here, but I can take out an x. And this turns out to be the greatest common factor of these two terms. You're allowed to take out 2x from both. Now, the next question is, 
what goes inside the parentheses? You want to put things here so that when you multiply the 2x back in, it would take you back to this previous step. Well, for here, I see a 4. I only have a 2 here. That means there has to be a 2, because 2 times 2 is uh, 4. Also, there has to be an x. And the reason is when you multiply this here, x times x is x squared. It's an x to the first times an x to the first, and you would add the exponents. I have to have a minus sign. And the thing I would put next is a 1, because 2x times 1 would give me 2x. It looks different, but we still have two factors that we can set equal to 0. So you can set 2x equal to 0, as well as 2x minus 1. Now over here, um, we now have a number in front of the x's, but that's okay. I know we can divide both sides by 2 in this equation on the left, and that gives me x is equal to 0, which is one of the solutions. Over here, I have to first add 1 to both sides, and then I'll divide both sides by 2. And this gives me that x is equal to f. So these are the two solutions to this original equation. So we have two methods. You can use a graph to solve these equations. Um, you could try to factor if possible. But there is another way, too. Uh, we can use something called the quadratic formula to solve a quadratic equation. I'm going to state the formula. If you have any quadratic equation of the form ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0, so a, b, and c are numbers, they're constants, the solutions are given by this formula. x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2 times a. So if you, you can identify a, b, and c in this equation, you can take those numbers, put them into this formula, and simplify them, and that will give you the solutions, if they exist. Now, we did this one first. I mean, we already know what the solutions are. The solutions are, let's see, it was negative 2 and also 3. So hopefully this method will give us the same thing. Now, step one is, well, what's a, b, and c? Those are the numbers in front of the x squared, x, and then the constant term. So in this one a is equal to 1, b is equal to negative 1, and c is equal to negative 6. Let's take this information, plug it into here, let's see what we get. So x is equal to negative negative 1 plus or minus the square root of negative 1 squared minus 4, okay, times a, that's 1, times c is negative 6, and this whole thing is divided by 2 times 1. So here I'm just being careful to use parentheses when I put these values in place. Let's simplify it. We have x is equal to, uh, well, negative negative 1 is 1. 1 plus or minus. Okay, uh, 1 squared is positive 1. One thing I'll note here is I have a negative times a positive times a negative Multiplying two negatives is going to give me a positive. And then 4 times 1 times 6 is 24. And this is all divided by 2. Okay, continuing. We get x is equal to, so this is 1, plus or minus the square root of, okay, 25. That's good. That's a perfect square under the square root. And this whole thing is divided by 2. This plus minus means we're actually dealing with two expressions. The positive and the negative will give us hopefully these two solutions, like we're hoping for two solutions, and this is saying, well, there's two possible values that you can put here. All right, let's do that. We're gonna simplify this to five and get the two values. So my first step is I'll put x is equal to one plus or minus five over two. Now I'm gonna break it up into two pieces. Okay x can be equal to 1 plus 5 over 2, or x is 1 minus 5 over 2. On the left, well, 1 plus 5 is 6. 
on the right, 1 minus 5 is negative 4. And, well, 6 over 2 is 3. That's good. That was one of the solutions. And then negative 4 over 2 is negative 2. So this process does work. It does give you the same solutions. Um, probably wouldn't use it on this one since factoring is pretty simple. The quadratic formula is nice for equations that are difficult to factor. So let's try one of those next. To solve this quadratic equation, you could attempt to factor it, but it might be very difficult to guess what the factors are. If that happens, we'll just go to this equation for help. I'll note that, okay, a is equal to 1, that's the coefficient in front of the x squared term. b is equal to 5, that's the coefficient in front of the x term. And c is equal to 1, which is the constant term. If we plug all this into the quadratic formula, we get negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 5 squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is also 1. And this is all divided by 2 times 1. If we simplify this, let's see, we get negative 5 plus or minus underneath the square root. That's 25 minus 4, which is 21, all divided by 2. Now this time, 21 is not a perfect square. Uh, actually, I don't even think it can be reduced because the only factors are 3 and 7. So really, the process stops right here. The solutions to this equation are given here, and there are two of them. Uh, one of them is x is equal to negative 5 plus the square root of 21 all over 2. And the other is negative 5 minus the square root of 21 all over 2. These can be reduced no further but they both make this equation true. One final thought on solving quadratic equations. What if there is no x term in the equation itself? Like this one here, uh, it's 5x squared, there's no x's, then it's a plus 3, and that equals 18. There is another way you can solve this where you don't have to use a graph, you don't have to factor, uh, you don't have to use the quadratic formula if you don't want to, and it's called the square root property. The process is a little different, but the goal is to get the x squared term by itself. And what you could do to do this is subtract 3 from both sides of the equation. And so what this changes uh, the equation to is 5x squared is equal to 15. To get the x squared term all alone, you could divide both sides by 5. And so you get that x squared is equal to 3. If you have the x squared term all by itself and only a number on the other side of the equation, the square root property is this. You can take the square root of both sides because taking a square root of a square cancel and it gives you just x. But there are two solutions. You don't just use the square root of 3, but you can use a positive and a negative solution. And this is what we call the square root property, where if you can isolate the x squared term, you can take the square root of both sides. You have just this x. You have the square root of 3 on one side, but there are two solutions. So the two solutions are, if you like to break it apart, are the positive square root of 3 and also the negative square root of 3.